The Apostle Paul declares that the gospel has three parts in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, brethren, I declared unto you this gospel. This is what I preached. This is what you received. And this is how you're saved. It is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Three parts of the gospel. The apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, he also declared that our obedience to the gospel has three parts. Repentance, baptism, and the receiving of the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this is how we apply the three parts of the gospel to our lives. If you look into the gospel writers, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all record the last command of Jesus. And although they use different words, it's very clear that baptism is part of obeying the gospel. Matthew records, go and teach all nations, baptizing them. Mark records, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Luke records that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in Jesus' name in all nations. Repentance and remission of sins is referring to repentance and baptism, of course. John, he tells us in John chapter 20, whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. When Jesus spoke that to the disciples, he was saying, you will have a chance to help people have their sins remitted, and that's why we baptize people. Obviously, the very last command of Jesus became the very first command of the church when Peter said in Acts 2, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so when we're baptized, there are two very critical elements. First of all, the mode or what is done, and secondly, the formula or what is said. When we look at scripture, because that's what's important to us, uh, we, we want to line our practice up to the Bible. Today, there are two kinds of baptism practiced in the Christian church, uh, by immersion or by sprinkling, usually done when someone is an infant. When we look at the record of scripture, we see that there was much water where they were being baptized. We see in Acts 8, they went into the water and came up out of the water. We see in Romans 6, Paul says, we are buried in the water and we are planted in the water. All of those words refer to an immersion, to a plunging, to a, a total uh, covering in water. And so we learn from scripture that baptism must be done by immersion in water. Today in Christianity, you see two kinds of baptism done. Some people say in the name of Jesus Christ when they baptize. Others say in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. But again, we want to look at Scripture, not just at church custom. In Scripture, we see that the Jews in Acts 2 were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The Samaritans in Acts 8 were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Gentiles in Acts 10 were commanded to be baptized in the name of the Lord. The Ephesians were commanded in Acts 19 to be rebaptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Peter taught us in Acts 4, there's no salvation in any other name. And Paul taught us in Colossians 3 that whatever we do in word or deed, we should do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. So we learn from scripture that baptism must be done in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, well, what about Matthew 28, 19? Doesn't that refer to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? It does, but we need to recognize what that verse is talking about. First of all, no one's being baptized in that verse. That conversation takes place up on a mountaintop where there's no water. Also, the name is singular. Uh, those three titles don't have any authority. It's one name, Jesus, who has three titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The same as my name is Raymond, and I'm a father, a son, and I have a personality, but there's just one name. Matthew didn't even write those words until A.D. 62 when every baptism for three decades had already been done in Jesus' name. He's not saying, let's change it. He's saying, Jesus is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and that's why we baptize in his name. And so baptism must be done in the name of Jesus Christ. There are no delayed baptisms in the New Testament. It's always the same. The same day, the same hour, immediately he commanded them. And so baptism is very important. Galatians 3 says... 
as many of you have been baptized into Christ, you've put on Christ. It's part of how you obey the gospel. John 3 verse 5, Jesus said, unless you're born of water and of spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And so the question for us that remains today and every day when we come to church is the same question from Acts 22. What are you waiting for? If you know about it, it's your chance, it's your time to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. I wish somebody would give God a praise for the wonderful experience of being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ.